Welcome to the Agency Founder Podcast. Are you ready to grow your marketing agency? We pull back the curtain to show you how real marketing agency founders struggled, built, and scaled their agencies. Practical advice, lessons learned, wins, and losses. We hold nothing back. Now your host, Jeremy Sonny. Welcome to the Agency Founder Podcast by Moonshine Marketing. Every single week, we interview successful founders of marketing agencies at different points in their journey to pass on their victories, defeats, challenges, and lessons learned to help you take your agency to new heights. This week, we're speaking with Nicholas Goldberg of Validus Marketing, an agency focused on lead generation for microblading and PMU artists. Nicholas, thanks so much for being here. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, so, okay, you're going to have to, like, my, like, dude broness is showing a little bit. What is PMU artistry, and what is microblading? <laughs> no, dude, I had no idea what it was before we ran into it either. So PMU stands for uh, permanent makeup, so it's in the beauty industry, and uh, it, it's a pretty new thing, but, like, imagine getting tattoos, basically, of your eyebrows done. That's a really popular one, or, like, lip fillers, stuff like that's considered permanent makeup. Okay, got it. Interesting. So permanent makeup and microblading. That's like a really fascinating niche. I'm excited to learn how you kind of landed there. But first, I want to know a little bit more about you. Okay, like tell me about your background, how you got into marketing in general, you know, what your journey has been like up to like kind of the agency founding moment. Yeah, man, it was uh, it's been pretty unique. I've had a super long backstory that we won't really have time to get into. But um, as far as kind of how I got into entrepreneurship, it was pretty unique. I uh, I went into the Marine Corps right after high school, and um, I ended up getting hurt. And I was uh, infantry, and they basically gave me an option. Uh, my surgery went wrong, and they're like, hey, you can either continue in an admin job, or you can just get out early, like a couple months early for the contract. And I did not want to do admin, so I got out, went to school kind of impulsively for – cybersecurity, because I was really into hacking when I was really young. But at the time, when I was like 10, 12, 13, cybersecurity wasn't even a big job industry anymore. It wasn't even like really in schools, colleges until 2015 and 16 is when they kind of took it seriously. So I saw it, hopped right into it. One summer, I came back home. And while I was going to school, I kind of got this like hunch for app development. So I had an idea for an app. And my friend was like, hey, I know somebody that is really into marketing. He's got an app that's really successful. Let me intro you. His name was Brett Knutson. And little did I know, he owned a $20 million app. I had no idea who I was meeting with or like who this guy was. What was the app? It was called Hive Social. It was basically like a place where you can meet people similar to your interests and what you're into in a like local area. It was really unique. He had the co-founder of EA Games as his head investor. It was like a really cool thing. I'm not even sure if it's even still active anymore, though. I know he's pursuing a lot of other things now, so I'm not even sure if it's still around. But that's kind of how I got into it. And then down the road, we did start a company together completely outside of marketing. But uh, eventually, I started finding Gary Vaynerchuk, his um, Crushing It books. And it just got me into like influencer marketing and marketing in general got a little bit into drop shipping and then kind of curiosity just kind of brought me over to Facebook advertising, which is how I got into the agency world of stuff. So you found marketing via like the Gary V sort of like gurus of the world. And I'm not saying that as like a slight or anything. It's just like really interesting to me because like you hear about those dudes and like they're banging the drum of like marketing and like digital agencies and everything like that. But like, I don't know if I've actually like met somebody where they were like, that's what sold them. I'm like genuinely like really curious about like, did you just start watching the videos and you were like, this is for me or did it take a while? Like, tell me about like kind of, you know, getting into the universe from that angle. So it actually wasn't Gary V that got me into it. So what Gary V did to me is I have a very particular skill with people um, where not to sound kind of like condescending or to me like, <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. I but, hear you. <laughs> um, I like, I don't know. It's just something like a gift that I have that people just tend to really like me. Like I've had multiple prospects on the phone tell me like word for word, be like, you could literally sell me rocks. Like, I don't know what it is about you, but I just want to buy from you. And I'm like, well, that's awesome. Like, I appreciate it. So Gary got me into influencers because crushing it was, um, a lot about like influencers that were featured in the book, like Dwayne Johnson, and so I learned about influencer marketing, and then that just led me down the path for myself into different forms of marketing. So 
I learned a lot from Dan Fleischman on influencer marketing. Shout out him. He's awesome. And then I regret how I found out about this, but so SMMA is like social media marketing. That's when I found Ty Lopez and I took his course. I won't even speak on my experience. Oh, uh, you took you took the Ty Lopez? I, again, like I'm not yeah. like hating or anything. I'm genuinely curious. Like what was what was that like? That uh, Okay, so I'm a very honest person. And this is just from my experience. So anybody listening and you want to like go for Ty Lopez, definitely do it. Um, it leads you in a lot of awesome directions. But please do not listen to him and like just go through that one course and then go try to get a client because there is not nearly enough information not even nearly enough to know like how to run ads efficiently, how to generate leads. Like I think it's a really good building block for understanding the concepts of social media marketing. But I think you should definitely learn a lot more before actually just being like, all right, I took Ty's course and I'm ready to go because that's what I did. And I highly regret it. <laughs> I, there is just so much more I needed to learn. No, no. Tell me, tell me about that. Did like you have, did you sign some clients? Was there like, you know, some like blow ups? Like, I mean, I've had client blow ups. It happens. You know what I mean? Like, so no, no hate, but yeah, just genuinely, genuinely curious about that. Yeah. So it ended up, so we got our first client, it was a dentist and, um, <laughs> we were very, very unprepared. So like one thing he doesn't cover very well is like the legal aspects of a business and like what you need to know as far as like, client retainers, contracts, agreements, like the actual legality of it, how it should work with proposals. We didn't know any of that. And our first client we ever brought on, we, I don't know how, but we managed to get like a $1,500 retainer and um, we were doing lead generation. So I just somehow got good results, at least at first. We were generating good leads. Like we did a teeth whitening deal and it like brought some people in and then they would upsell from there. I focused on kind of Russell Brunson. I was a big fan of his like books as far as like the secrets and stuff like that. So we did like funnels where they would have sales funnels on the back end. But so we did like it didn't go well, definitely didn't go as well as we wanted. Uh, but I, I will honestly, if I'm being honest, it was a lot of the client issue because we would like bring them people that their specific practice, like only their practice could not work with. So like there was people in their area that had like a certain type of insurance that they just didn't take. So even though we had 15 people willing to come in and get work done, they're like, oh, we don't take your insurance. So it definitely wasn't all our end. It was definitely some of it on theirs. And it was just unfortunate. Sure. Yeah. Some of those, some of those things can definitely happen. So, okay. So you did the Ty Lopez course, you got a couple of clients or, you know, there was a blow up, right? And you're like, okay, I'm not, I'm not really ready. And so then what do you do? Right. So you're like, okay, but I'm sticking down this road, right? Like I'm still interested in it. And, and so what, what's that next step? So the next step was I met a very good friend of mine, Ravi Abuvala. I found him before he is who he is today. Currently, he's doing like 550K a month and has just, that's only some of his businesses. And when I found him, he only had like 11,000 followers. And I don't know, we kind of just hit it off. I found what he was doing. He was doing like lead gen for other agencies, which there's plenty of that out there. And we hooked up with him and I ended up signing with him. So we started doing some like lead gen for us, ourselves to get clients. We can dip into my thoughts on that too later. But um, so that was kind of my next step was like, okay, let's like fix what went wrong with the first couple of clients. And this is actually how we got into microblading. We ended up signing a girl that was in New York and she asked us to do microblading. And I'm like, what the hell is that? <laughs> like, I have no idea what that is. And we ended up running her campaign. And we spent like $160 and made $4,000 in revenue for her in two weeks. Wow, that's a that's a pretty big ROAS, you know, return on ad spend, right? Um, I, th I Yeah, that's interesting. So you were like, okay, maybe there's something here, like in this like niche of microblading. Is that kind of what the next thought process is? Yeah, so from there, um, I actively joined a ton of Facebook groups, including the one I met you in, Jeremy. And I kind of, realized at that point it was like one of the biggest lessons i've learned today is don't learn from anybody who hasn't already done and been where you are or you want to be like if you really want to learn well find someone who is where you want to be or has already done it and learn from that person i made mistakes of trying to learn from mentors who had never worked in marketing didn't even know what to do like it was just a big mistake so at that point my next step was like okay clearly we're not doing something right let's finally start learning from people who have already done this, you know? And it, it was, 
you want if you want a massive shortcut, even though you're still going to go through a bunch of crap no matter what you do, find someone who's already done it. And that is where um, uh, roughly like five months ago, and this is why I'm, I like stress the point, like don't just take the Ty Lopez course and think you're good to go. About five months ago, my current mentor, like my my main mentor, he literally like destroyed my business. He looked at it and was like, oh my God, like how are you functioning? Like you need to restart from the ground up. And um, so five months ago, we restarted completely and just changed our messaging, like everything about us. And then we got to the industry we're in now. And within like six weeks of making that like restart, we made more money and grew more in six weeks than we did in an entire year. Yeah, some of those lessons can be really painful, right? Like subtle shifts in your business model can make like a huge, huge impact. Do you want to talk about kind of what those specific shifts were that you made a little bit? Like, you know, you don't have to go into like super specifics, but like, you know, what did you change? What were you doing before and, and what did you change that made such a big impact? Yeah, man, it was incredible. So I don't know if you, have you heard uh, the name John Whiting, Jeremy? I have not. Okay, so he's like kind of my current mentor, but him and my friend Ravi I mentioned earlier, they're both very big on like, if you were to take the four hour work week, the book and just put it into a person, it would be those two people. One of the biggest things we did is both of their like kind of models are outflow equals income. And we were not nearly taking enough advantage of our time on actually doing outreach. And this is kind of where I learned one of the biggest lessons was people think that getting clients is step number one, and it is not. That's like, step three or four, what we had to do in order to make a big difference was messaging. Like your messaging has to be on point and it has to resonate with your audience in their own words. So like I see so many like generic marketing websites now where like I'll go on it and it's like we do SEO and lead gen and Facebook ads and e-com and like they do like everything under the sun and like it's not for any specific person. So it's going to be hard to resonate with somebody like that. So if you come on to our website, if you go to validusmarketing.com, the first thing you read is guaranteed lead generation for PMU artists and salon owners. Like that's pretty clear who, who that's for. So we fixed our messaging a ton. Like we created an organic Facebook group where we give free marketing advice for any PMU artists. And it kind of like, it's like a value ladder at that point where we can do consultations and turn into clients, but messaging 100% made a massive difference. And John even has this way of like, you survey your own audience to find out in their words. So like we were marketing to them in our own words. And then the day that we surveyed like a hundred and 200 of them, we found like the 10 most common used words and like what they want from marketing. We put them into our marketing and we just exploded. So if you, if you create that ecosystem of like your own natural, like you a Facebook group where you're just nonstop educating, nonstop value adding, and not just trying to like get clients from it, they will come to you 1 million percent. That's interesting. So, so you're almost taking like a, like interestingly for somebody that sells, you know, paid ads, you're almost taking like a content marketing approach. Would that be a fair, fair way of saying that? Yeah. So we have a two-sided ecosystem. So one is that organic side where like people find us and we don't have to find people. So it's more incoming leads. Now, the other way is complete, complete automation. So we have all automated. This is 100 Instagram messages going out to our ideal client. We have, uh, we're starting with Facebook messages next. And just so you know, like the effectiveness of like figuring out your messaging and then start outreach. So we were doing 100 emails a day. We sent out 36 emails, got 13 responses, eight calls booked, and four sales in one day. Like it, that was all from one day's outreach just because our messaging was so on point. But we have messaging going out every single day and every single platform, and we're still trying to improve. Like we are supposed to be doing getting somebody on board for cold calling, and it is the bane of my existence. I hate cold calling with a passion. Not a fan of the cold calling. Interesting. So you have like automated outreach and then you have content marketing. Which are you finding actually works better out of curiosity? So your content marketing will take longer for sure because we just reached like 200 members in our group and now we're starting to generate leads from it. So it does take a bit. Now, what definitely, so for us specifically, because like things like, I think anything with your face, like contour, makeup, eyebrows, that is a very Instagram centric kind of content. So on Instagram, if we like, I have a sales tracker that I could just pull up, but like if we did um, 100 messages a day, we normally get anywhere from like 
three to five responses and I'm very good at what I do. So I can turn those into booked calls, like maybe three of them. So it's definitely Instagram is our number one driver, hundred percent Instagram. Now we had the biggest problem with spam with email just recently and uh, could not get out of the spam box for the life of us. And I think we just fixed it today. So knowing that I can send 36 emails out and close four clients from it, like that's insane. So that's also our biggest driver, email and Instagram. That's interesting. That's really wild. So you keep saying, taking a kind of a step back, you keep saying we, you have co-founders? Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I also like low key regret this, Ben and Justin, I love you both. So I have two co-founders, Ben and Justin, and we are all equally involved and equally put in as much effort as anybody on the team. Now starting out, so because of the salary aspect of this, <laughs> three people splitting uh, revenue each way is very hard to do when you're starting out. There's not a lot of money to be made. So like we were literally taking like, I took like 400. Now I have other uh, sources of revenue. So it wasn't like a horrible thing for myself, but both of them were going to school full time. Justin was able to drop out recent, I shouldn't say drop out. <laughs> he took a break and um, now he's almost like full. I think he is full time, just invested all day in Validus because we've been able to do that now. But I would say if you can just have like maybe one co-founder or just yourself to start off until you need help. Like when you have so much crap going on throughout the day, then you actually need help. That's when I would recommend to like maybe bring on some help or hire someone to start setting the appointments for you versus you having to do it for yourself. How do you like choose to divide up work? What's the team dynamic like? You know, do you spend a lot of time on like things like team culture and stuff like that? Talk to me about that sort of stuff. Yeah. So I'd say there's definitely challenges as far as like making a business with your friends. I've always been one to like never have that as an issue, but for sure, like when you get in arguments with co-founders, it can be awkward, but <laughs> um, the team dynamic is pretty incredible. We all want the same thing. We're all really young. Um, we're just kind of striving to create what a lot of people doubt a younger generation can do. And because of that and all of that similar goals, uh, it really does help drive each other to know exactly like what to do, where to go, we're all very understanding. So finding somebody with the similar goals as yourself and similar attitude as far as like work ethic goes, that'll make or break your business in my perspective. But as far as the uh, how work is divvied up, it's actually pretty easy to segment because so what I'll do is I take care of all sales. I'm in charge of sales calls, sales setting, as well as Facebook and Instagram ads. So that's all my job as a day to day basis. Now, Justin, he will take care of everything automation. So all automated outreach our own like onboarding automations, uh, client automations for follow-up for leads, like everything automation is Justin. And then everything funnel building and like photo, video, editing, so, like that is all Ben. So he's very on the creative side. Justin is very like systems and automation side. I'm very sales advertising side. So that's really interesting. You know, I think that it's pretty clear that you have different skill sets that you all kind of bring to the table and kind of mesh well. Um, I'm curious, like, you know, a lot of companies, a lot of agencies I talk to, they they focus a lot around like culture and things like what, you know, what would you say like your agency's like kind of values are, you know what I mean? And like, how do, how do you define those out? And, you know, how do you use them to kind of like guide your decision making? As far as like our values, um, I don't think you would meet people that like care more about their actual client than us. We ended up even after doing well, it's just kind of the value as us as a person kind of just blends into it. So we're like, we're incredibly caring. We want to do everything we can to actually like see our client success. Cause when we get like a text saying like, Oh my God, like I can like afford to move to a studio now, or like, I don't have to worry about bills this month because the leads are converting. Like, That'll be better than any sort of paycheck I could ever receive. Just knowing you helped another human being in a time that's like really hard for them, or even if they're just trying to grow and you can be a part of that. So as long as uh, our main value is just to like see growth and not only ourselves, but our clients, and we'll, we'll do anything on our end to improve that. We've even taken people on who literally said, I, I can't afford you straight out. And like, I learned about a girl's situation and we brought her on anyways, like our, we're, we're very much into helping others in a very, very authentic way. So we brought someone on before in a sense of just like, hey, I know you can't afford this, but we just want to help you as a person. So we're going to do this month for free. And what actually ended up happening is she did so well that first month, she became a paying client the next month, which was really cool to see. So kind of understanding and compassion is a very big like motto of ours, if that makes sense. No, that's really interesting. I like that, the you know kind of client approach first. 
um, you know, kind of leading with that compassion, leading with um, helping folks out. You know, I, I want to say, you know, I want to I want to really, you know, kind of dig in, though. What has been, in your opinion, the biggest challenge so far? And what do you see as like kind of your biggest challenge moving forward? Yeah, absolutely. So biggest challenge, 100 percent was and I'm I already kind of touched on this but it was seriously lack of knowledge was the biggest biggest hurdle and I feel that's where like a lot of people in the marketing space and they start off hit you know like they'll hit this spot where they're like okay how do I get clients or okay how do I pick my pricing or stuff like that and um there used to be this really cheesy like thing that I would go by and it was like the biggest lesson you can learn is like heartbreak no money and like some sort of other loss and uh a motto I live by now is like the biggest lesson you can learn in life is from the people who have already done what you've done and are where you want to be and learning from them. Like that's going to be the biggest lesson in your life. So the biggest hurdle was just finding the person to learn from or like a source to learn from that will actually effectively grow your business. So I think um, knowledge is definitely one of the biggest hurdles that we had that we overcame and a lot of people kind of get obsessed with the knowledge phase. And I'm sure you've seen this, Jeremy, where they'll be so focused on like, I don't know enough, like I need to learn more, I, I need to learn this, that they'll never actually take that first step and try to like start the business. <laughs> people kind of get stuck in that phase. So just the knowing like how much to learn from who and then knowing when to take that first step was our biggest hurdle. Going forward, as far as like what exactly is going to be our biggest hurdle this is going to be kind of stupid, but I don't see one as of right now. But if I had to pick something, I would say like maybe just scaling to where we want to be only servicing one niche. I definitely do have like a fear of that in a sense of like now there's like hundreds of microbladers. That's what they're called, uh, microblading artists. There's hundreds of them that get certified each day. And I'm also like somewhat afraid of scaling as far as pricing in our business. So we're like at a baseline of like the lowest package we accept now is nine ninety seven, and it's like three fifty ad spend, six fifty for us, and to actually pay for like any like systems and process that we have to do, like Twilio, we like put some money on their accounts because we have a lot of outgoing texts and stuff, anything like that. So my worry is like you now microblading is pretty specific in a sense of like you get a lot of money per like you get three fifty all the way up to a thousand per client that you microblade. So as long as we can prove to them that like hey we have if we spend this much money on average, if you do what you're supposed to, we can make this much in return. I think that would help a lot as far as scalability, but I'm just a little worried about scalability as far as future endeavors go. Interesting. Yeah. And now scalability because people aren't going to be interested or because like the market is too small, the niche is too small. The market's massive and it's actually only getting bigger. My problem is like the willingness for people to pay the amount they need for marketing. Because a lot of people like this is one of those things like it could have very easily been a pyramid scheme. This microblading like there's girls that we work with that do education that they teach you how to microblade and then they certify you. And a lot of people have really bad work or like they're just they don't know how to get clients and they don't have the startup cost to get going. But then you have random people like we just accidentally run into some people that are like, yeah, I spent thirty seven thousand dollars last month on marketing, and I'm like what the hell are you doing? Like, what? Yeah, I think it's just about like, this is where positioning and messaging comes into play again is like once, cause we have, we've never run Facebook ads for ourselves as far as we don't need to do that yet to get clients. And it's something we're going to be starting pretty soon here. So I think if our messaging is pretty clear and we're able to get that across, I don't think it'll be an issue going forward, but I think it's just the matter of fact of people willing to pay, but you just have to provide enough value to them. It's that it's hard to say no. You know what I mean? Right. I hear what you're saying. Well, Nicholas, this has been really fantastic. I super appreciate your time and definitely, you know, loved learning about your kind of non-conventional journey into the marketing world. Uh, you know, definitely uh, a really interesting story and a, a unique perspective to be sure. You know, it sounds like you're well on your way. I think, you know, I for this podcast, I love to kind of interview people at different stages and like having somebody from, you know, kind of a non-traditional background as well as a... Uh, you know, kind of, I, I won't say like super early on, but like, you know, definitely kind of earlier in the grand scheme of all agencies has been a really, really cool experience. So I appreciate your time today. Um, everybody that I have on the show, I let them pitch one thing, whatever they want for one or two minutes at the end. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let you do that right now. 
Yeah, anybody that's listening, and uh, thank you, I appreciate your time today too. I always love being on stuff like this to kind of like just share what we know as marketers and kind of our experience because it does help people learn. So um, thank you for having me. I appreciate your time as well. As far as pitching, I mean, I'm pretty straightforward here. If, if you guys do know or have any uh, salons or PMU artists, anybody in the beauty industry that is looking for advertising, we offer money back guarantee if we don't reach a certain amount of qualified leads in that first 30 days. Um, we're very well priced and we have a ton to offer as far as future is going into. We're testing with a lot of new permanent makeup services like fiberblasting to get rid of like extra skin and wrinkles and there's just endless routes going into this PMU space. So we'd love to hear from you guys. If you do have any referrals, we also do <laughs> referral bonuses. So uh, if somebody signs up for three months, you get a chunk of each management fee every single month that they are with us. So uh, that's really all I got. Other than that, I would say, again, just thank you for having me. And I appreciate it so much. Absolutely. If you all know anybody that owns a salon or, you know, is in that beauty space that would be a good fit, definitely send them to Nicholas. He's a really smart guy. I had the pleasure of knowing him for a few months now. Um, you know, for everybody out there listening, you know, take this as inspiration. Definitely, you know, find yourself some smart mentors early on. Um, focus on that scalable, repeatable sort of business and take these lessons to heart and go out there and grow your agencies. So everybody listening, happy marketing.